So now that we have got the token, as you can see there, as a response for the authentication, the next operation we need to do is to deserialize this particular JSON into a type which we can then use to verify if that particular object has got a value or not. But even before we start doing the deserialize, which we are going to discuss in this video anyways, let's first do some assertion so that we can prove that this API call, the post operation, is actually working as expected. Var token is equal to JSON string dot, and there is something called as a value property for this particular string, which is because this JSON string is basically a JSON element, if I'm not wrong. You can see here this is a JSON element type. So we could be able to use this JSON string dot value property. And using this value property, we can also use a method called as get property, which you can then use to do uh, a token that you can get it, the value of the token, you can get it using the token that you can pass in for this particular property, something like this, which is great, right? And then you can use this two string method to do it for you. And because C Sharp is very intelligent enough, I mean, this IDE is very intelligent enough for C Sharp to tell you that this JSON string might be a null if the response is not going to return you any value, please use a nullable type there. So you could able to just do use conditional access by hitting control dot like this, or you can also just do control dot once again and use the check expression for null something like this. I mean, anything is fine. Whichever you prefer to go with, you could do it. You can use the nullable type of C sharp, something like this. You can just put a quotation question mark there in front of the dot it is going to be a nullable access. So if there is a null there, it's not going to throw a null, null reference exception. Rather, it's going to give you a nice way of representing what it is going to be. But this is even readable in the code that this value may be null, something like that, right? Cool. So once we have this, we can then get the token value and then we can do an assertion out of it. And because we have also installed the fluent assertion in our last video, we can just use the should method. And then we can say not be a string dot empty or something like that. So that is not something you're expecting, right? And now let's try running this code and see what's going to basically happen. So I'm just going to run it. I'm not really going to debug it again because I know that this deserialization is going to work. I mean, this is one of the way that you could deserialize it. I'm going to put a breakpoint here. Let me just quickly show you what is the value basically coming up. And then if I just step over and you can see that the token comes in, right? This is cool. So this is how you can get the token using the get properties uh, method over here. Well, as that said, now that we got the token, what is the other way of doing it? What is the better way of doing it? Rather just doing it in this way. Because this type is basically, uh, I mean, the token response that you get it is gonna only have one property in it. Uh, this way is much, much better, really. You don't even have to create a separate type. But what if the response is going to have a lot of data? For example, if a person that you are trying to fetch is going to have these many datas, how do you verify each and every properties out of it? That is going to be a bit cumbersome, right? So I'm going to show you the first way of doing it. But in the next video, I will show you the other way of doing it later on. But for now, in order to do that, we first of all need to do what is called as a deserialization using a JSON. So in order to do that, I'm going to create a class. I'm going to call this as authenticate. So this is the class. And this class is going to hold what is called as a token in it. So that's what this authenticate is basically going to, this authentication class is basically going to have. So I'm going to do a string type. I'm going to call this as token, something like this. And you can see that I'm actually using a small letter for the public for token. It can be capital letter. That's what the standard in the C sharp as well. But I'm just giving a small T here. And there is a reason for that as well. But for now, let it be. And I'm going to go over here in this code. So instead of this code that we just saw, I'm going to comment this code out. Um, I'm just going to say JSON string and you know what? You can use what is called as a value dot deserialize extension method, which is available out of the box for this particular JSON element. So this extension method is actually coming from what is called as a system dot text dot JSON. And this is what I'm going to be using this time. So I'm going to basically deserialize the response to authenticate type 
over here so that I get the response which I'm looking for. So I'm going to say the response. Uh, it can't be response because we have already used the response there. So maybe probably authentication. And because we actually have got an authentication response and because it is a type, you can then use this type with exact value, which is going to be the token. Because this token property is something you have defined here. So you can use this token. And then you can say should not be string dot empty, something like that. So this actually works. And because you see that we are getting an error here, it says that authenticate can be an uh, null as well. So you can just do a dereference, use conditional access, something like that. And similarly, this can be a conditional access as well. Now that we have done the code, so let's see what is going to basically happen. So I'm going to put a breakpoint there. And if I try debugging this code, you will notice that this time it is going to get me the response with the token. And you can see that the value is being assigned to the token property over here. And the test is going to pass eventually something like that. There we go. But now that, as I told you, this T is in small letter. If I try making this as capital letter and even fix this particular error that we are getting, so fix this as capital letter. And then if I try debugging this particular code, you will notice that the token is basically a null value there. The reason why it is null is because the deserializer couldn't able to deserialize based on the case that you have in the properties. So if it is a case uh, which is going to have a capital letter case, then it is going to actually not work. So you need to make sure that the deserialization uh, works as expected. So in order to do that, within this deserialize, there is also a property that you can use just called as JSON serialization option. So I'm just going to do that over here. So I'm going to say new of maybe I need to specify the type here, JSON serialization option. And over here, there is something called as ignore or something like property name case insensitive as true. So if you set property name case insensitive as true, which means it is going to ignore the token value and then this is going to run. And once I save this, and now if I try debugging it this time, you will notice that the deserialization should eventually happen. So if I go to the authenticate response and you see that the token, even though if it is in capital letter, the value is still being set over there. The reason why it is being set is because the JSON serializer options has made this possible for us. And the code is eventually going to pass over here. So this is working as well. So this is another way for you to work with it. And the another thing that I have noticed is, let's say if I try removing this JSON serializer from over here, the T is just capital letter still. And then if I try running the test this time, you know that the token basically is going to have a empty value there, but still the test is passing as you can see over here. So if I try debugging this test for the authenticate response, you will notice that the token value is null. But why is it still null? and the test is still passing because as you can see we have only verified the token should not be like an empty value but string the, the string empty is not the case over here because we have used what is called as a nullable type so even if it is null this thing is going to still execute for us which is not quite right so in order to overcome or avoid this problem we are going to do this response dot token should not be null. So we need to also verify for its nullability over here. And now if I try running the same test over here, you will see that the test is going to fail because the value is actually null. So if you try using the nullable check over here on the top, once again, you will see that the test is still going to fail because we have this not to be null set there. So this is another great way of you to ensure that the string empty alone is not enough for you to do the testing. You also need to verify for its null value. So great, you now have an idea of how this deserialization works in Playwright with C-Sharp.net and how that you could able to do a deserialization much, much easier using the extension method available out of the box with a JSON element in the JSON in the system.text.json namespace, which is great. 
So now that we are going to drill down even further in our next lecture to understand how that we could able to work with other API requests.